Many years ago, there used to be a television program in Britain called That Was The Week That Was, and we've just been through a hell of a week that was. Uh, it started out with this extraordinary takeover of the ACT Party, and then it was sort of followed at the end of the week by an even more set of extraordinary activities around Honi Hauerwera and the Mana Party. And I think a couple of things have got lost in the whole process. One is, these are two sets of players at the extreme ends of politics. So the media's preoccupation with having to find out what Honey thinks or what Don thinks and put them in a debate situation really passed most New Zealanders by because they're not out there in that extreme world that these two inhabit. I think the second thing is that when they did get together, they talked past each other. They didn't actually engage on the issues at all. Uh, in fact, some of the reactions that I've heard from people suggest that they were talking past each other about issues that really belong to yesterday, not today. And all of which, despite the hype, I think leaves people with a sense of what does all this mean? We've got an election coming up in six months or so's time. What's the relevance of all of the shenanigans to what might be the outcome there? And I think a few things have been completely overlooked in the process. Firstly, most mainstream, middle of the road New Zealanders, and that's what the majority of New Zealanders proclaim they want to be, don't live out in these extreme worlds. They're not really interested in the dogma or the bile or the venom that comes from one. Uh, they simply want to know what's the impact going to be on them and their lives and their families and those around them. And it's not clear from either of the extremes that they have any uh, message for those people, they have any interest in even dealing with them. So when you start to say, well, where does this leave the electoral landscape? Uh, come back to this point. Most New Zealanders are comfortable with John Key's government because it's not hostage to extremes. It ploughs a sensible, middle-of-the-road course. It looks at issues as they come up, decides what it thinks is in the best interest of New Zealanders, and then acts accordingly. And yet people might say now, well, hang on, Don Brash has reappeared on the scene as the great saviour. Uh, a government that he has influence over, won't that be a much less uh, compassionate, a much less responsive government than we've got at the moment? And I think the answer is yes. A government that ACT has influence over will be a government of the right, by the right, for the right. And that's a very small minority of New Zealanders. And that's where United Future comes into the mix, because we have a record of being able to moderate governments back towards the centre of the road where most New Zealanders choose to live. Uh, some of the critics say, well, you don't want to be in the centre because that just makes you roadkill for any passing traffic. But there was an Australian politician who made the observation that he'd loved being in the centre because that way you didn't get trapped in the ruts at either side and I think that's the more correct analogy. And what New Zealanders have the opportunity of in November therefore is making a choice. If they want to see John Key remain Prime Minister leading a sensible, moderate, responsive and responsible uh, national government, then they've got to make sure he's got the partners to make that work. And the obvious partner, because of our track record, because of our policies and because we run away from extremism the way most New Zealanders do, is United Future. So at the end of a week that's been a rather long and uh, confusing one for many people, I think one of the great benefits is that it's drawn the landscape so starkly that people now have a much clearer sense and choice that there is an alternative to those who are out there shouting and screaming. That's us, because we can just get on with the job and make sure that government keeps getting on with the job for the benefit of all of us.